One week ago, a brutal day on the Ohio River near Madison, Indiana. Driver Steve Reynolds was seriously injured when the Cellular One blew over in a battle with the Budweiser. But racing must go on. On the Detroit River, Jim Kropfeld pushed the Budweiser to an incredible course record of over 150 miles per hour. The Unlimiteds are next. Columbia Crest Winery presents the 1987 Unlimited Hydroplane Series. Today, the Budweiser Spirit of Detroit Trophy Race. Brought to you by Ford. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Household Finance Corporation, America's number one financial services company. And by U-Haul International. Rent it all at U-Haul Centers. When you think of Detroit, some of the most famous family names come to mind. Ford, Dodge, Chrysler, many more established families that have owned homes here since the 1920s. At the same time, Detroit is a city coming back. Its downtown Renaissance Center is world famous. With its sculpture and reconstruction downtown, this is a city dressing up for the 1990s and decades to come. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Detroit. I'm Don Poyer along with Jim Hendrick. As you know, one of our drivers last week, Steve Reynolds in the Cellular One, was injured. And before we start off today's activities, we have a couple of messages for him. First of all, from the head referee, we've got to bring in Lee Shaneth. He's already upset about something, Lee. Listen, you missed the first heat. That's a lap penalty. <laughs> Steve, you're already in hot water. Jim, you got a message for him? Well, I got a message. Get well, you big lug. We miss you. <laughs> and what about you people? Got a message for Steve? We miss you, Steve! All righty. Well, it's time to go to work. So, James, go in a living and let's get to racing. You know, when you come down to think about it, the cellular one is not here. You still got a challenge from Pringles, Jim. But I think maybe one of your main competition has to be Chip Hanauer. He knows this river, and he's been successful here before. Well, he's won four out of the last five here, and I've only won once. So uh, that kind of puts a little more pressure on me. But, you know, it still puts pressure on him. Uh, he has to kind of keep his uh, string going here, too. And they've been having their problems down there, and we've been running very well. So uh, I don't know. I'd have to say we're the favorite, and I would say Chip is probably uh, very close. Right now, Don Poyer is done with Chip Hanauer. Let's check in with the Miller American camp. Is the water here a neutralizer to some degree? I think to some degree. Uh, I think, on the other hand, though, not only do the other guys seem to be going faster, they seem to be doing it easier. So I don't know that's really going to work in our favor this, this week. Well, this, as you always say, is like Yankee Stadium of hydroplane racing, and I know it's a special spot for you. It's so a good luck today. Thanks. It's been good to us in the past. Yeah. And maybe, maybe it'll do it again. <laughs> okay. Let's go now to Jim for the rundown of Heat 1A. Seven boats in the field today for this, the fourth race of 1987, and the first four that'll compete in Heat 1A are Pocket Savers Plus, Jerry McCoskey Buick, driven by Todd Yarling. Mitch Evans in the Pepsi America's Choice U15. Scotty Pierce in the U8, Mr. Pringles. And the defending champion of this event, Chip Hanauer in the Miller American. And, Don, that's the way they stack up. How about Heat 1B? Okay, thanks, Jim. Three boats now in Heat 1B, and here's the rundown. First of all, Jerry Hopp in the four racing, the U7 Unlimited. Next comes Ron Snyder in the Hulset Miss Madison. And finally, setting a new course record, Jim Kropfeld at better than 150 miles per hour in the Miss Budweiser. So that'll do it. All seven boats are ready. We're ready here in the Motor City. We'll be right back with Heat 1A after this timeout. Welcome back to Detroit as we get ready for Heat 1A. Now, you're running a lot better. You've done well in testing. What do you think? Well, I think uh, we're going to have a real good chance come the final heat. It, uh, once again, uh, you know, we're going to run fairly hard through the prelims, but uh, the race is won in the final heat, yeah. and the same old Scott Pierce story. You know, we're, 
But uh, we really feel that the Pringles has a boat now that we can run to win in the final heat. Uh, the guys have done a marvelous job. It's only really, this is the sixth heat yeah. the boat's ever been in, so it's coming around real fast. Okay. We're real pleased. Go we'll get them. Thanks, Don. Good. First boat out on the course, the U-22 and Todd Yarling. Yep, Saddam, you're ready to go. Yeah. I, know, I know you've had some prop problems, but they got the engine going much better now. Yeah, we've got all the engine problems straightened out, and Fairlane Tools did a lot of work on our props. They've been a lifesaver, and I think we're ready to go. Okay, good luck today. Thank you. The gentleman competing here in Heat 1A, Todd Yarley, the man driving the boat we just saw, Pocket Savers Plus. Mitch Evans, in his debut in the Motor City, driving the Pepsi America's Choice. Scott Pierce in his first year under the Mr. Pringles banners with a turbine engine, that is. Finally, the national champion back in 1985, Chip Hanauer. Four boats in this, our first heat of the day on a very hot, humid day in the Motor City on the Detroit River. Two turbines, two piston engines. As the four boats come around the very tight rooster tail turn on your right of the screen, Mr. Pringles. As the Pocket Savers Plus, the U-22, Todd Yarley coming down. Here come the four boats, all ready for the start. Very close to the cameras here as we line up at the start finish. And the Mr. Pringles may be over the line too soon. We cannot tell, but we will get it officially for you in a moment. The Mr. Pringles may have jumped the gun. Here is our shot from atop the Whittier Hotel, now a retirement center. The waves, the rollers out in front of the Whittier are very famous now as the boats negotiate those those swells and then going into that turn, a very wide first turn here on this two and a half mile course on the Detroit River. River rather tamed so far and a beautiful shot from atop the Whittier, the Middle American in lane number one and the Mr. Pringles in Scotty Pierce in lane number two with the slight lead. But here comes Hanauer. Hanauer who has won in four of the last five races. The Mr. Pringles going dead in the water it appears. But as I said, four out of five victories in the last five years for Chip Hanauer on the Detroit River. He calls this the Yankee Stadium of hydroplane racing. Certainly, it is the oldest race course with the most tradition. No question about that. Even though Seattle fans might argue a bit. Here comes the U-22, that being the Pocket Savers Plus. Also, Bukowski Buick, one of the sponsors for that. And the Little American coming through to complete lap number one. Todd Yarling and his wife, Tanya, watching on from the pits down in the rooster tail turn. The Little American, again, this is a brand new boat for Chip Hanauer going into the wide first turn. You can keep your speeds up pretty high in this turn, up approaching 140 to 145, even 150 miles per hour. The Pocket Savers Plus trying to get the right propeller for that boat. Here's Mitch Evans. His first race ever on the Detroit River. His father raced here back in the 50s and 60s. Chip Hanauer starting a tradition of his own. He's been here 11, 12 different years. Handling problems, as you see, for Todd Yarling as that boat porpoises a bit, riding off the blade of the propeller and the sponsors. This boat, Ed Cooper's, out of Madison, Indiana. Uh, really, so far, since the Mr. Pringles seems to have gone dead in the water, a chance for the Miller American to have an easy time here in Heat 1A. We do have word now that the Mr. Pringles did indeed jump the gun, but he is running again. There he is. There's Scotty Pierce. He did jump the gun, but has a, sh a shot at least getting some points here in Heat 1A. The Miller American, first place. Again, from atop the Whittier, gives you some idea of the speed that they reach going through that turn. Sometimes it's hard to tell from our camera angles, but there you get a good feeling of it. And, wow, look at the back suit. A lot of those, what they often call parallel rollers, kicking the boats around on this very unforgiving two and a half mile course on the Detroit City River. The Pringles now moving into third place. As Scotty Pierce on the inside, Mitch Evans out of Lake Chelan, Washington. Runs a marina out on that resort lake, a huge lake in central Washington. And Chip Hanauer, very familiar sight as he drives the Little America here on the Detroit River. He won his fifth straight gold cup right here on the Detroit River one year ago. Again, look how light the Mr. Pringles is in front of the Detroit Yacht Club going down the back chute. All these boats seemingly are very light going down the back straightaway into the very tight rooster tail turn. From the Whittier Hotel. Usually it's fairly smooth until they get about there and you see the Miller American having a few 
problems as it goes through negotiating that turn. This is the tight rooster tail turn directly in front of the pits. Coming on the outside, it's there's the Miller American. Chip speeds averaging right around 120 miles per hour as he completes lap number five. And Chip Hanauer takes 400 points for Heat 1A. Here are the official results. Miller American, Pocket Savers Plus, that's Bukowski Buick as well. Then the Mr. Pringles, able to get third place after jumping the gun and going dead in the water. Scotty Pierce doing a good job. And then finally, Pepsi, America's Choice with Mitch Evans. Looks like the Detroit River has raised its usual ugly head. This is not <laughs> qualification water. No, it, it never is. You know, I can only remember maybe one time out of the last 11, 12 years I've been coming here that we really had nice water. and One of those was a Monday, so it's tough. All right, the boat was upside down in dry land. Let's not mislead people. Working on the sponsons and parts of the boat. Looks like it did the job. Well, it, it improved the boat. You know, I can't say that we're there yet, but I can say that the boat's getting better. And, and that's all we can do is just keep, you know, our, our minds working and our elbows flailing and try and get there. Good second place finish for U-22. Don Porras with that crew right now. Don? Todd, what happened to the leg now? Oh, it was, it was awful rough out there. And uh, we've managed somehow to destroy all of our propellers by the time we got up here so we've got a brand new one on the boat this is the first time in competition and it uh it just don't like rough water neither so does I, your leg it yeah. sounds like so i really had to, to baby the throttle to keep the boat in a good attitude to run with and uh as a result it what went to sleep? uh yeah my leg went to sleep oh okay so it's not broken or anything well no not quite <laughs> How about this for rhythm? The Mason Elementary drummers keeping everybody awake in the pits. Back on the Detroit River, Don Poyer with Jim Hendrick and Jim Cropfeld heading out to work on another Sunday afternoon. Likewise for Jerry Hopp in the Thor Racing U7 and Ron Snyder. In the Holson Miss Madison. Imagine sitting behind a turbocharged Allison engine like that. <laughs> what a thrill. And the drivers heading out onto the course. Jerry Hopp, of course, in Thor Racing. He is joined by Ron Snyder in the Holson Miss Madison. Gentleman out of New Bremen, Ohio. And out of Cincinnati, Jim Cropfeld, the defending world champion in the bud. No doubt about it, the Budweiser getting a break in the draw, qualifying almost 40 miles per hour faster than the other two boats in Heat 1B. So a chance to pick up more valuable national points in that race for the 87 season. Here comes the start. Thor racing on the inside of the Budweiser, and then Ron Snyder and the Holt and Miss Madison. It's a legal start. Again, only three boats, but a gorgeous view as you look across the river, too. Better than 500,000 fans here, according to Detroit police reports. A lot of people. Great tradition of boat racing here on the Detroit River in Motor City. And what can you say about that, Miss Budweiser? Qualifying at over 150 miles per hour on its qualifying lap. That is only the second time any boat has done it. A couple of years ago, you might recall when the Middle American and Chip Hanauer ran over 153 in Tri-Cities, Washington. These two boats running pretty good right now. As a matter of fact, in lane number two is Snyder taking over second place, going against Jerry Hopp. A couple of Allison engine-powered boats, the turbine, the light coming inside the Budweiser. Again, 150 miles per hour. And yet, Jim maintains that he ran only about 177 in the straightaways. That means he was screaming through the turns here in the Detroit and the two-and-a-half-mile course. Right now, Budweiser averaging about 115 miles per hour. So he's taking it easy on the equipment. Still a good battle for second and third with Snyder on the outside. Ron Snyder from New Bremen, Ohio. And in third place, out of the town of Snohomish, Washington, near Seattle, is Jerry Hopp in the four racing in the U7. But the Budweiser undefeated in 1987. In fact, in 1986, they won in Las Vegas. They won in Miami in 87. Then in Evansville, Indiana, at Madison, Indiana, last week by virtue of points after the weather shut down the racing. Jim Cropfeld in that tight rooster tail turn. Remember last year when the Budweiser came through here? My goodness, talk about trouble trying to handle a boat. Cropfeld did a great job, and now he has some kind of machine to ride here in this new season. 
Ron Snyder was not secretive about his displeasure over his boat going through the turns in Madison. Unable to maintain the boat speed he needed to compete with somebody like the Budweiser. Right now he's in second place. Can you imagine riding next to Ron Snyder? See how he jumped and <laughs> rocked and rolled inside the cockpit. The Budweiser with Tim Cropfeld. He is strapped down with the five-way belt system. Lots of cushions on each side of him. Plenty of cushioning above him as well as a result of the accident involving Steve Reynolds where Steve hit his head on the canopy. Now the Budweiser and Chip Hanauer and the Miller have padding on the canopy directly above them. Jerry Hopp in the U7 in third place here in Heat 1B. Four vastly different race courses we have competed on here at 87. The tight Miami course, the very safe with a slight dog leg on one of the straightaways, that course in Evansville. Then on to Madison, Indiana with the incredibly long straightaways, very tight turn. And now here in Detroit where it's rough, rough throughout the course, two and a half miles. Very wide first turn, extremely tight second turn, and then down the straightaway next to the wall. Right now, Jim Cropfield out of Cincinnati with the lead. National point lead and the heat lead here in 1B. You can see even that boat having problems trying to handle. Look how tight our cameras are on Rod Snyder. You can ride along with him. Jim Cropfield. Made it very clear he was concerned about this turn right here. He was afraid that even the new Budweiser might have problems handling competition water. You know how rough that can be on the Detroit even during qualifying. But look who wins. Heat 1B. Jim Cropfeld and the Budweiser. So another 400 points for Mr. Cropfeld and company. Then Ron Snyder with a wholesome Miss Madison. And Jerry Hopp comes through with a third place finish. Down to the pits. Looks like uh, you had a little bit of rough water in that quarter number three by the Yacht Club. Were you doing any adjustment in the front end? Oh, I sure was. I was uh, putting the canards down to give me a little lighter ride up there uh, as I got into this turn. But coming up past the Yacht Club, I had them up in the air to keep the bow down. Boss man, Brittany Little, did you tell him to go slow on this one? Oh, yeah. I motioned to Lauren up there to have him take it easy. And, uh, you know, the race is all in the final heat, and that's where we want to go for it. Okay, Don? You're a little tired out there and a little warm, to say the least. Uh, was the methanol worse than normal, the exhaust? Oh, yeah, Don, you know what it's like when the humidity factor is like this and everything just hangs down close to the ground. So does that methanol on that boat. Charlie, how's the boat running right now? I know you guys felt real good coming into it. Considering the water conditions, Don, everything's fine. Uh, we're not trying to tear up any equipment. we got a long haul west. Uh, we're just trying to make it through this the best way we can. Everything's going fine so far. Okay, last question. I want to know what's this all about. What's this button? Last TV show on TV here last week. Just give him hell, Ollie. They explain it for a little here. Well, hey, I hope he runs for president. He got my vote. About six miles to the west of our race course, Lake Sinclair. We'll be back in a minute. This is the Continental High Performance Corner. A closer look at the fastest race boats in the world. As most of you know, last week we had an accident involving Steve Reynolds in the Cellular One. That was an enclosed cockpit, but we do know that Steve hit his head rather hard on the canopy of that particular boat. Now, as a result, Chip Hanauer, Jim Cropfeld, and the Budweiser, the two other drivers with enclosed cockpits, have changed the design somewhat. Now, what have you done as, as a result, Chip? Well, we had a friend, Dr. Uh, Bill Bookwalter from Pittsburgh, come in and look at the cockpit. He's a neurosurgeon, and he said the best thing that can possibly be done is padding. And he just kept stressing, pad everything in there. Even if you don't think you can reach it, pad it. So we've now gone to the philosophy, if I don't look through it, it's padded. Okay. You have less room for your head in your canopy, in your cockpit, than Jim does in his. Uh, that's all right? Well, I don't know. And you know, the Miller team is certainly open to whatever the neurosurgeons and the, the people who know far better than us. We're bow racers. We're not, uh, we're not doctors, yeah. and we're not physicists. And, if somebody can really sh tell us hard evidence or show us hard evidence on what we need to do to make the Miller American cockpit better, we're doing we're, When it comes to safety, we're not stubborn at all. Jim Kropfeld, now what exactly have you done to the cockpit and your seat in the Budweiser? Well, we uh, cut about an inch off the bottom of the seat. That's about as far as I can go. I'm actually sitting right on the bottom now with just a little frame around me and some padding. And uh, 
that's about all we could do right now. Uh, it got me down about another inch and a half because I'm sitting on an angle like that. And we put some padding on the, um, the bars overhead. And racing on the Detroit River in July would not be complete without a show put on by the Grand Prix boats. These guys are something else. Eight boats for the final. These are blown engines, be it Ford, Plymouth, Chevrolet, raw horsepower. And they all hit speeds of up to 120, 130, even 140. The Miss Danish too broke out into the lead early, but a challenge was put on by a number of people. On the right, the prime mover, sponsored by Stroh's Beer. Here's the Danish two in first place, but watch out for Jimmy King and the Orange Crush on the outside. Did they ever put on a show? Both boats had better than 102 miles per hour after lap number one, and then Jimmy King didn't look back. Many people feel this is the future of unlimited hydroplane racing. Maybe going with dual automotive engines. Much cheaper, more efficient. Not nearly as expensive as the turbine power. And it's certainly a lot noisier, and that is a major part of racing. Jimmy King with an outstanding day as he comes into that equally tight rooster tail turn setting a course record 106 miles per hour on his final lap. Jimmy King, the Orange Christ, got the victory here on the Detroit. Congratulations. You not only were able to find a lane and get out of the traffic, but you set a course record at the same time. Was it a typical Detroit River race? Uh, guaranteed. The boat was hitting hard. It was getting out of shape, but uh, the boat we're real pleased with, and things came together well. It's an elementary question, but what was the key for you, to get in the inside first and get outside uh, ahead yeah, of everybody? Just not to get caught up in the start. Uh, there was three boats that I was really concerned with, GP Valley Field, Mr. Yeah. Nash, and GP12, and if the four of us could stay out of trouble, we could have a good, clean run, and then whoever was the hottest for the day was going to have it. Some of the Unlimiteds noticed it was getting a little light going down the back chute. Did you notice that at all? Oh, yeah, it stood on the prop most of the way down, but we're, the thing will handle it. We're happy. <laughs> okay, nice go, Jimmy. <laughs> Thank you very much. The Unlimiteds and Heat 2A, next. <laughs> Welcome back to Detroit. This is Mitch Evans, who drives the Pepsi America's Choice. He is the second generation of the Evans family driving. Of course, his father Norm did. But this is your first trip to Detroit, right? Yeah, this is the uh, first time out. We we had been here a few years ago. We couldn't get the boat qualified, so Ed called me and I came back, and uh, it's a lot of fun. What's it feel like? You know, your dad drove out here, coming down into Detroit, the the Yankee Stadium of uh, the Hydros, as Chip Hanauer puts it. Yeah, it's it's really exciting for me. You know, I was. I remember coming out here when I was a small child and, and coming back and racing now is uh, it's real exciting. Your bloodline continues, huh? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Especially in a boat like this, being a conventional, you know, and a rough course, it's it's uh, unreal. Okay, well good luck. All right, thanks. <laughs> Incidentally, we are on an abbreviated schedule. They have moved the final up an hour earlier because of a weather front coming in. 2A on schedule, likewise for 2B, we hope. All four boats up and running here in Heat 2A. The second flight, Miller American again matched with the Mr. Pringles. Scotty Pierce and the Pringles hoping to get a better start this time after jumping the gun in Heat 1A. All the boats safe, you can hear the gun. They're just crossing the starting line right now. The Miller American comfortably in first place. In second place is the Pocket Saver Plus with Todd Yarling out of Hanover, Indiana. The Miller American with that padded canopy above the head of Chip Hanauer. Going into the first turn. Second place, Todd Garling and the Bukowski Buick, also called the Pocket Savers Plus, dual sponsorship here in Detroit. And the Miller American coming down the back chute where all the boats have been a little light today. Jim Cropfeld was concerned about it, running and adjusting the canard wings. Those are the wings in front of the cockpit. The Mr. Pringles running now. Scott Pierce also with canard wings up in front of him. He can adjust and change the ride or affect the ride of the sponsors. 
and the overall vote. Second place is Scotty Pierce trying to challenge the Miller American. In third place is Todd Yarling. All the boats running considerably lower than they were or slower than they were during qualifying. Much more traffic. The water here, yeah, looks smooth, but believe me, it is not. As they go down to the end of the main straightaway, that's where you hit those big rollers or the swells in front of the Whittier Hotel. Scotty Pierce and the Duncan Hines presents Mr. Pringles. What a long name. Got a lot of them today <laughs> in Detroit. Oh, my, look at the boat getting way out of shape. The U-22 and Todd Yarling, they have only one propeller to work with today. Todd saying that his right leg went to sleep because of the rough water in the last heat, so he's getting beat up a little bit as he tries to hold on to third place. Miller American first. An hour who won his first ever gold cup in the Atlas Van Lines here a few years back, about five years to be exact. Scotty Pierce with one victory to his credit, that being back in 85 down in Miami in this particular boat when it was powered by a Merlin engine, a piston engine. But no longer. We don't have any Merlin engines in this sport anymore with the exception of the Oboy Alberto, which we'll see out in Tri-Cities, out in Washington, the western half of the swing on this circuit. And the Mr. Pringles again. Very happy with the results of their marketing for the Mr. Pringles and they want to go racing throughout this year and hopefully even more so in 1988. The Miller American and Chip Hanauer, the national champion back in 1985. Todd Yarling in third place. The Holson Miss Madison, it is laboring. And the Miller American in first. Stan Hanauer, the father of Chip, watching on as he was last year here in Detroit, watching his son become the only man in modern times to win five straight gold cups. Stan has worked on hydros for many years. In fact, built his son's first hydro. Scotty Pierce, he was quite a go-kart driver back in his teenage years, national champion, in fact. And Todd Garling, he worked his way up the ranks in the limited boats, and then on to the unlimiteds driving for Jim Sedan. The Miller American, new sponsors, they worked on this boat throughout the week, trying to settle it down somewhat, but you can see it's still riding rather roughly in certain areas of the course. And you get all the help you can, any way you can, in hydroplane racing. Again, from our camera at water level, right in the rooster tail turn. Just beyond the pits. And Chip Hanauer coming down the lane straight away with a shot at another 400 points. Scotty Pierce needs the points to get into the finals, and he does, getting a second place. As you see, 525 should do it for Scott, along with the Pocket Savers Plus and the Wholesome Miss Madison, getting a fourth place down to the pits in the Miller camp. Chip Hanauer, it looks like the water's getting even rougher. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's, uh, it's hard to compare. It's been bad all day. What about that corner number three? If you get in close to the buoys, it seems like you're riding better. Um, it's you have less boat speed though, and that's why it might appear you're riding better. It's it's hard. I I think everybody's just right using these heats to search out a place to run where they can find some good water. I haven't found it yet. <laughs> Winner four out of five times here. Now you must know the scores pretty well. What's the strategy for the final now that you've had a perfect day so far? Well, Jim Cropfield's running really well, and I, I don't know that uh, anybody can stay with him. But I, I think if there's anybody that can, it's the Miller American, and we'll just do our best to do that. Thank you, Chip. Okay, Don. The humidity continues to climb. The temperature continues to climb. And so do your points. I know you made a mistake on the first heat, but uh, you're in the final after the second place here in the heat. Well, that was the object. I really feel bad about that first heat. Uh, I haven't done anything that stupid since uh, Miami in 85, and I won that day. Maybe this is an omen. <laughs> I hope so. I, I feel bad for Pringles, and uh, I know better than that. It just I timed off another, again, a wrong buoy once again. But like they say, though, aggressive mistakes are often forgivable. It's the other ones that are hard to accept. Well, that's true. You know, the boat's really running so much better now than what it has been, and uh, so we're real pleased going into the final. We need to tame the boat down a little bit. Yeah. And, we're going to do everything we can to get her tame, uh, even if that includes going back home to Seattle, redoing the spots. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think you're going to have a good show. And Detroit isn't known just for making good-looking automobiles. Uh, we'll be right back after this. As we see the new Budweiser heading out, you can't help but wonder 
What kind of racing we would have had today had the Cellular One not gone through that accident last week? He was challenging the bud at that stage. Bernie? So far, so good today. Yeah, yes, Don. It's uh, been going good, and uh, good Lord's taking care of us, I guess. You can hear the Miss Budweiser wheeling out on the courts, and uh, he's running awful well, and I just hope everything goes good. To... I'm hearing some of the guys say, Bernie's a little uptight today. I mean, yeah, I'm, yeah, I am uptight. It's the Detroit River, and uh, a lot of things happened to us over 25 years here in the Detroit River, and I just like to get through it and <laughs> get everybody home. Well, Bernie may be concerned about the safety of all drivers today, and who can blame him? Boy, his boat's getting a great break again in the draw. The Budweiser already in a commanding position here at the start of E2B. And away he goes with Thor Racing and also Pepsi America's Choice competing here in Heat 2B. Jim Kropfeld beginning to stretch it out a little bit. Maybe trying to get a feel for the final coming up where he knows he'll be facing a couple of other turbines. Mitch Evans out of Lake Chelan driving Ed Cooper's boat. One of the few remaining conventional styles with the engine in front of him. But the Budweiser now coming down the back chute where, again, the boats were getting light. You have to adjust those canards that are but really on each side of the cockpit, attaching the middle of the boat with both sponsons. There's the battle again for second and third place with Mitch Evans on his first trip to Detroit. First time to race here. I believe he was here as a child once watching his father. And look how quickly the Budweiser gets through the tight rooster tail turn. My goodness. That's how you get a 150 mile an hour qualifying lap. About a six second turn and then hold it at about 170 down the straightaway. Chuck Hickling built this boat in Seattle years ago. Jerry Hopp. Driving a boat that at one time was the Squire Shop. Chip Hanauer drove that years ago. Both of them charged by Allison Engines and the Budweiser in first place. Perfect day so far with 400 points in an earlier heat and a good shot at another 400 today. And look at this, the battle for second and third as Mitch Evans in lane number two trying to hold on to second place, but hoppity inside. We call him Hippity. Takes second place as he holds on to lane number one. Good race going into the wide turn. The Belle Isle Bridge in the background. As you see, both of these boats heading around, able to keep their foot into it all the way around and down the back chute. Jim Cropfeld getting his way. It's that simple in this brand new Budweiser and only his fourth race. And even it can get a little out of shape every now and then. That bright spot from getting up in the air. And you're right inside behind the windshield with Mr. Cropfeld. Bill Davies, our cameraman of the start-finish line, getting those tight shots. And here's Jerry Hopp again, bouncing along that back turn. This boat's been around a long time. Al Thorson, the owner, crew chief, done a great job, though, of keeping it in racing. And the Budweiser just keeps flying along. From here, Krockfeld will have a real challenge as he goes out to Tri-Cities, Washington, the fastest race course in the world, no question about it. When great times are recorded, it is usually in Tri-City, where the waves are dissipated against the beach. They don't come back into the course. It is just a perfect spot to race boats. Bernie Little, who was undefeated in 1987, and mentioned earlier, a little edgy, a little concerned, and who wouldn't be after the catastrophe that took place at Madison a week ago when Steve Reynolds was seriously injured in the Cellular One. Everybody wants a smooth day today. Get in, good racing, and go home. And Bernie Little's hole is in first place as Jim Kropfeld holds on and simply gets the boat dialed in now, preparing for his final heat against Scott Pearson, the Pringles, and Chip Hanauer, his old rival in the Miller American. If anybody knows this course as well as Jim Kropfeld, it has to be Chip. He's driven here for better than a decade. It is something special in his heart. And if anyone knows the secret way, the quickest way around a circuit, it's got to be Chip. Look how quickly that Budweiser can turn. Anything under eight seconds is fantastic, and he's beating Matt rather dramatically. The Budweiser in first place here in E2B, ready for the final. 800 big ones for Kropfeld and Company, then the Thor Racing with 525. And it looks like America's Choice Pepsi is going to miss the final by just a few pesos. Down to the pits. 
All right, Jimmy, it's not only been preliminary time, but it's also been testing time with the Canards. Do you feel now you've got it set up for the final? You'll never have it set up on the Detroit River. All right. What about this blue hanky? Are you ever going to tell me what this is about? Uh, well, we'll just uh, kind of keep it to ourselves for a while. I'm dying to know what this blue hanky is. Before the season's over, you're going to tell me why you're wearing this. Well, we'll see how good you are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Don. Somebody looks kind of tired. You okay there? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. The Detroit River is never kind, huh? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Somehow, for some reason, we're getting a lot of heat from the engine in the cockpit. And it's just, it must be 120, 130 degrees in there. It just really gets to you after you're driving out. Well, plus trying to steer in here as well. It's yeah, hanging on is another problem. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, nice going, Jerry. Second place. Yeah, we're in the final heat, and that's what we wanted. And we had to, do, had to do a little playing around there with Pepsi to get by him on the inside. But I got that, and then I got by him. It really made our day. <laughs> We pause before E 2 B, and the crowd has a message for injured driver Steve Reynolds. <laughs> Along the shores of the Detroit River, time now for our Mercury Update. Beautiful sunny skies and an unseasonably cool weather and brought thousands of fans to the banks of the Sacramento River to witness the third round of the International Outboard Grand Prix Series Racing. A full field of powerboats racing's most experienced and talented drivers gathered here in this beautiful California setting to compete in three classes for $45,000 worth of prize money. In the 50-lap champ boat final, it was the Bud Light team of Mike and Bill Siebold in the one and two starting positions on the pole. 26-year-old Mike Siebel jumped into the lead and led the way for 20 laps, but a series of spills and near accidents caused several restarts in the event. Father Bill Siebel provided several anxious moments for the crowd as his near flip and recovery on turn two cost him his calling and invaluable seconds in the race. A later collision in turn three with Don Johnson took him out of the event completely. Veteran driver Buck Thornton in the ship's watch boat passed Mike Siebel on lap 21. But five laps later, his boat turned and caught fire, sending Thornton into the water and drowning all hopes of repeating his Augusta, Georgia win. On the second restart, Mike Siebel was again on pole, but a short in his starter left him at the dock while former Mod VP world champion Chris Bush and last year's defending IOGP champion Michael Verner fought for first place position. Bush emerged the victor and led the rest of the race, taking the checkered flag for the Castleberry's food team. The SST 140 race was the smoothest contest of the afternoon, but it was not uneventful. With four laps to go, Jim McKay from Modesto, California, barrel rolled while trying to pass Mark Miller for second place. This gave the win to top contender Terry Leatherby in his Tracker Marine sponsored boat. The Sun Construction team of Mark and Kevin Miller play second and third. It was a triumphant day for the Castleberry's food team as the fair-haired driver from Augusta, Georgia, Rusty Campbell, took his second win of the season in the Mod VP class. The 30-lap event was restarted three times when minor accidents caused the race to be stopped. Campbell and his Mercury-powered STV hull jumped into an early lead each time and was never really challenged despite strong contenders like Chip Watkins driving for the California Gold team who barrel-rolled his boat on lap number nine and California driver Alan Stoker who flipped on the first restart. Greg Foster from Tustin, California in the Del Taco boat pursued Campbell throughout the remaining laps but could never quite catch up to Campbell's lead. Campbell proudly took the checkered flag for the Castleberries team. I was having a little trouble with a prop blowing out. We got that solved and uh, just kept wanting to get this thing over with. Too many restarts and uh, I'm just glad Castleberries STV was running, handling the rough water like we planned on and that was the key. We could handle it and some of the others couldn't. Join us on the mighty Mississippi in Davenport, Iowa, and Rock Island, Illinois for the next stop of the International Outboard Grand Prix Tour. In Sacramento, California, this is Steve Michael reporting. Yet another message to Steve Reynolds, the injured driver from last week. Get well soon from some of the crew members of other teams. The lineup for the final heat, a very good one, and that's next. I'm Don Poyer with Jim Hendrick. We have waited the afternoon and it's time for the final. All the turbines are in it. The top five boats, including Todd Yarley. The Budweiser, obviously the boat to beat. A perfect day for the Bud, likewise for the Miller point wise. 
Jerry Hopp will be one of the drivers here in the final in Thor Racing. Also joining him, as I said, Todd Yarling in the Pocket Savers Plus. One of the turbine drivers, Scotty Pierce in the Mr. Pringles. Uh, naturally, this is it. I mean, how you finish is, is how you do for the day. So hopefully uh, we can pull a win out for the first ever for Pringles. We have a good shot at it, I think. Hoping to have a say about that, Chip Hanauer in the improved Miller American. We need uh, a bit of luck and uh, a good performance out of the Miller American and myself, and uh, we'll take what it, what it brings us. And everybody is gunning for this man, Jim Kropfeld and the Budweiser. I'm worried more about the elements than anything else. The water's rough, the wind's blowing, and this turn right here is just horrendous. So uh, it's going to be a hang on and hope you finish type heat. For the final, a five boat field. And there's the rundown. Three of them turbines, two of them piston engines. And here they come. The Budweiser in the bottom lane, number three. He might be a little early. You saw it. He was past the buoy when the gun went off. We'll have to wait for an official report. But look at the acceleration on the part of the Budweiser. An incredible boat. It is raising hydroplane racing to another level. In second place, Scotty Pierce in the Mr. Pringles. And in third place, the Middle American. But we have not gotten official word yet if the Budweiser jumped the gun. If that was the case, then the Pringles would be on top. And that would be your fifth place boat. The Budweiser coming down the straightaway. Looks like the water settled down a little bit as they go past the Detroit Yacht Club and into the tight second turn. One reason for a five-boat field. Because of the narrowness going into that second turn past the Yacht Club. Simply not enough room for six big unlimited boats. All right, we now have official word. The Budweiser did indeed jump the gun. Jim Kropfeld obviously will be unhappy with himself because he knows he has a superior machine. But that is the first place boat, the Mr. Pringles. The Budweiser then in fifth. First place, Mr. Pringles, Scott Pierce. He has only one victory to his credit back in 1985. One of the younger drivers on the circuit, Todd Yarling, is in third place. And Jerry Hopp in fourth with the Budweiser at number five. Third place. Again is Todd Yarling. The Budweiser has been penalized one lap. One lap for jumping the gun. And this now is the race for first place. The Mr. Pringles in Scott Pierce out of Seattle. A fellow Seattle native right behind him is the Miller American on the outside. That boat not running as well as they want it to be running. Of course, Hanauer would love to be competing with the Budweiser, and eventually I'm sure he will. Bernie Little, what can you say? He knows his man has jumped the gun. But there will be other races, and they still have a commanding lead in the national points race. Scott Pierce now has to concern himself with this man, Chip Hanauer, who is less than a rooster tail away on the outside. He had trouble starting the engine for the final heat, that being Hanauer. He may have lost a little power as a result. In fourth place, check that. Third place is Todd Yarley in the pocket savers plus. Scott Pierce now trying to use all the course, hugging the apex buoy, going wide in the straightaways to make Hanauer go even farther. Fourth place is Jerry Hopp in the Thor Racing, and at number five is the Budweiser, creeping around trying to lap some of the field and gain more points. I don't think you'll ever catch this boat. No way, that being the Mr. Pringles, but the Miller American, the rooster tail spray to Chip Hanauer's left of the Mr. Pringles. He is stocking Scotty Pierce. Budweiser, number five, physically in first, but not today. After crossing the starting line too soon, Kropfeld penalized one lap. And now Scott Pierce. The limelight is on him. He is the man now. He could possibly get his second career victory, the first time in Miami. Oddly enough, he jumped the gun and was penalized for jumping the gun in an earlier heat in Miami when he went on to get the victory. Maybe it'll happen here in Detroit. Pierce looking to the left, trying to find that man, Chip Hanauer, who is now cutting to lane number one here on the fourth lap. They're just completing the final lap. And Hanauer has decided to go on the inside. Let's see what happens now as they go into the turn. Pierce now has about a six-boat lead, and he is able to go into lane number one. If he does, that should shut the door on the Mineral American. Scotty Pierce going after victory number two. Nothing but water as you wait for the Mineral American on the inside, as you can see. And there it is. There's your race for the, for the championship here in Detroit for 1987. And he's done it. As you can see, the Mineral American now going to the outside. Scotty Pierce has shut the door on the Mineral American. And all he has to do now is keep that boat running, complete this, the final lap, and he'll have 
victory number two and the first ever victory for the Mr. Pringle and Duncan Hines. Scott Pierce around the Rooster Dale third for the last time. He'll get it. He'll get the 400 points. Second place will go to the Middle American and Scotty Pierce has won in Detroit in 1987. Second place, Middle American Chip Hanauer, a winner here in four of the last five years. And the Budweiser goes past the Pocket Savers Plus. He'll get third place. But the winner today, the spotlight on Mr. Bringles and Scotty Pierce. 925 points, a great day for Pierce and company, Miller American. Then the Budweiser getting third place at the line, Pocket Savers Plus, and the Thor Racing. Down to the winner's circle. <laughs> Scotty, congratulations. This Thanks, is amazing. Dog. We were just talking about 85. You yeah. jump the gun in the first seat of the day, then you win. This is a I nice know. omen. I'm not crying this time, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Jamie, their daughter. Oh, my goodness, Jamie, get in I'll here. I'll tell you, though, in all seriousness, I mean, the Pringles boat ran great, and I'm real proud, but I'd like to dedicate this one to Steve Reynolds and a nice, healthy recovery. And I know that Steve, if he was here, he would have given me all I was worth, just like Chip was. Well, the kid was running. I had to work for this one, but we're real proud, and, and it's our first win right. for Pringles, and I hope we have many more. What do you think, Jamie? That's what I thought, too. He's She's pretty a happy camper. She's a happy camper. <laughs> All right, we'll be back. Jamie, let's say it together. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> Well, we have come to the end of a very hot, muggy day here in Detroit, a typical race in Detroit. The river was unforgiving, hot weather, as we said, the threat of thunderstorms, but some very good racing in the final heat. And, and in a sense, in terms of the point race and everything else, it's nice to see the Pringles win the race. Yeah, so we're sitting aboard the Pringles here, and we're right in the cockpit. You can see there is no canopy, but that's soon to come for Scotty Pierce and the Pringles team, and I'm really glad to see that by rules of the racing mm -hmm. and the brakes are racing, they won. And I think that's, I think, I think it's pretty good for the sport. And Brendan Little said a little while ago, I saw him hugging Scotty Pierce, the driver, and said, you deserve that win. And I thought that was very good sportsmanship on Bernie's part. Now this, as we look ahead, is an interesting time of the year. As you know, we get done in the east. Now we go out west to that lightning fast course out in Tri-Cities on the Columbia River in Washington State. And I talked to Jim Cropfield, a Budweiser driver who set a record here in Detroit course, 150.8 earlier this week. And he said, that's the one where he remembers Chip Hanauer got 153 plus. He it, huh? And he sees 155 for Budweiser out there. We'll have to hold our breath. <laughs> okay. It's good racing out there, especially. It's been great here, but you really see all the boats pick it up even more, about 10 miles per hour. Well, for Jim Hendrick, I'm Don Foyer. That's it from Detroit. And we'll see you out from the West Coast in just a couple of weeks. So long, everybody. If you'd like a copy of the Unlimited Hydroplane Press Guide, send $4.95 to the Unlimited Racing Commission, 414 Pontius Avenue North, Seattle, 98109. Air transportation provided by Continental, the official airlines of the Unlimited Racing season for 1987. Columbia Crest Winery brings you the 1987 Unlimited Hydroplane Series. Sponsored by Ford. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Household Finance Corporation, America's number one financial services company. And by U-Haul International. Rent it all at U-Haul Centers.